Oh, what is up? Oh, what is up? <laughs> hey, what is it? The mic was just over here. I hit record and then I fucking look down. I'm, I'm not holding the mic. Welcome. It is the 11th of December. Welcome to Let There Be Talk. And uh, it's going to be me today. It's going to be me today. Me and you, you and I. Welcome to the show. First up, let's give the Patreoners some big love. If you have not heard the Patreon bonus episodes of Let There Be Talk, there is 2,500,000 of them. <laughs> And you can get it at patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. Let me give the shout out to the new Patreoners. It's Tim Porter. What is going on, Tim Porter? Kelsey Olson. Kelsey Olson is in the house. Ben Lynn Brooklyn, double B. What is up, double B? And then uh, just D, somebody named the letter D. Uh, those are the new Patreoners. Thank you. Also, shout out to uh, my great sponsor, Standard and Strange, the one-stop shop for all of the best denim, leather, and boots uh, on the planet. All Japanese goods you can get at Standard and Strange, one-stop shop. Uh, I, I just got a jacket there, and it fucking rocks me. A Y2D D pocket, if you don't know what that is, uh, I've dove deep into the rabbit hole many times and i've talked about it it's uh the best leather design ever it's a leather jacket with the d pocket anyway fucking standard and strange dot com go to their instagram go to their stores you can catch them in new york city berkeley slash oakland and new mexico all right what is happening, everybody? My voice is absolutely trash today, which is not a good thing when you're podcasting. And after all these years of using my voice for a professional type of uh, situation, <laughs> I can tell when it's trashed and I know exactly when to uh, rest it and know how to rest it, which usually means... Uh, lots of throat coat tea, sleep, and uh, no talking, which is uh, not going to happen today because I got to do the podcast. It's trash because I went to a bunch of Christmas parties this weekend. And, uh, you know, these goddamn parties have the music way too loud. <laughs> just fucking old. Just old when you say anything like that, the music's way too loud. I can't talk over it, but it is true. The fucking music was cooking loud. A lot of good friends at the party. And I was just, uh, you know, I kept finding myself talking to them by the fucking speaker. The speaker would be here, music cranking. And then I would move way over to the uh, other side of the room. But for some reason, everybody was fucking in the corner where the speaker was i don't know what it was just drawing you over there like all of a sudden you're just in the corner by the speaker again you're like fuck let's go over here and talk and you go over to the other side and the next thing you know you're at the fucking speaker i don't know so it's tired i went to the comedy store last night christmas party and uh it was fucking great all kinds of good friends there uh Holtzman was in the house my good man Holtzman who I don't get to see as much because he spends half his time out there in Texas Ian Edwards Eric Griffin uh just you know Polly Shore just no place I'd rather be during the holidays than around my uh comedy store friends and family it's just great great vibe uh there was some karaoke. No way was I going to sing karaoke. Voice was already trashed. And I do not sing fucking karaoke. Uh, if you do it, cool. Uh, you know, I just, oh, there's nothing more cringeworthy to me than uh, karaoke. And it, it's mostly because of the system 
that people bring for the karaoke. It has that fucking atrocious reverb on it to try to make anybody uh, who can't sing, try to make them sound good. I can't believe that they have not added the, um, what is that fucking called? The auto tune to the karaoke uh, machines yet. I I cannot believe that's not in the karaoke machines yet. So it just says, you know, I know way, I know way up, I know way, 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 way. Um anyway, there's some people singing karaoke. And they and my voice was trashed, it's still trashed, and uh I was just feeling for them. I was like feeling my throat because they were up there just doing cookie monster and shit. One guy was doing like a cookie monster version of you ought to know by Alanis Morissette. And all I kept thinking was like, Oh, that guy's not going to be able to talk tomorrow. And, uh, Holy shit. I'm talking a lot about my voice because, uh, over all the years I've been lucky enough to been able to use it to, uh, make a, uh, kind of make a living. And uh, podcasting, singing, comedy, all of it, like massive amounts of uh, of voice usage. And speaking of that, I announced on Thursday that we are doing the Bon Scott Bash. And uh, it's rescheduled last year. Uh, my mom passed away. Rest in peace. The great Vicky. And uh, we're going to dedicate this one to her since she was the person that took me to see Bon Scott in 1978. So, uh, you know, it's all about the cool parents. Be a cool parent. If you're a parent out there, be cool. It goes a long way when you're fucking raising somebody way down the road, uh, you know, let them, you know, they want to play soccer, let them try some soccer. They want to be trans, let them try being trans, you know. I was thinking about it when I was young. I I almost was trans, maybe. I dressed like a woman most of the time in those rock outfits. <laughs> that was that was almost trans. It just didn't stick. But uh <laughs> you know what I mean? Out there in the fucking spandex. With the fucking teased up hair and makeup. Just out there fucking rocking some Hanoi rocks look. Anyway, um, yeah, be a cool parent. You know, I had a fucking just the greatest mom ever. And she took me to see that uh the great day on the green number five in 1978 on the Power Age tour. And that was it. Hooked on Bon Scott ever since. And uh, when he passed away in 1980, I uh, got a group of uh, friends together and started doing the Bon Scott tribute. Back then, it was called the Church of Bon Scott. That's what we called it, or I called it. And uh, it started, you know, what's it been, uh, over 40 years now. And it started with... Bay Area bands like Death Angel or Jet Boy or, uh, you know, Vane, uh, all these Bay Area bands. Who else? Exodus guys. Tons of Paul Gilbert had played it. He played drums. Uh, tons of people would get together and we would do a record. So, like, let's say we go, let's do Highway to Hell. And, uh, and each band would get, like, two songs like Death Angel. I think they were called the organization by then when we were trying it. I don't know. It might've been Death Angel at the time. It's been so fucking long, but they were these incredible nights, very festive. They usually fell on my birthday because Bond died on February 16th. My birthday was February 3rd. So we thought, well, let's do it right around then. And, you know, I'd get the fucking cake in the face and the the uh, Coors lights poured over the head, all that shit. But it was epic. And we did it for many, many years. And then, uh, of course, the stone closed. And uh, and then Josh Z and myself, Josh Z, who is one of the 
greatest guitar players I've ever seen in my life. And uh, early on, wanted to do a band with Josh C. If you have not heard my podcast with Josh C., who was in a band called Protein that was signed to Sony Records, I believe. They were big in San Francisco, a three-piece. Very, very outside-the-box, cool, fun music. Uh, Josh Z and I, uh, you know, he's in a band called Midnight Lightning. He was a kid in Marin County, like 16, 17, or 18 or something, and he was just the fucking killer on guitar. He had a white Strat, and uh, he was like a skater-looking kid. Tried to do a band with him many times. Just didn't work. Josh had his own vision. I had my own vision. But we uh, bonded and remained very close friends over the group ACDC. So once the kind of band's uh, format went away, I put together just a, a, a one band. And it was me and Josh Z. Billy Rowe, always from Jet Boy on Rhythm, who plays at Buck Cherry now. And Ronnie Crawford, one of the greatest fucking drummers of all time. Very, very underrated. And not a lot of people know him, but he played in my band. He also played with uh, that that girl. What was her name? You say. Had that. Lisa Lowe. When he, uh, when he was recommended for my band, they were like, yeah, you should check him out, man. He played in Lisa Loeb. I go, Lisa Loeb? I, I, I don't play like uh, coffee shop folk music. I didn't play metal either. I was playing like Roots Americana, and he came in and just fucking killed it. And to this day, I feel that he's one of the greatest drummers I've ever played with. So I put together a band, and we started doing it at the bottom of the hill, which is one of the greatest venues in San Francisco, still open. One of the only few venues open in San Fran still to this day. All of them are gone. Slims, Paradise Lounge, The Stone, The Mabuhe, uh, Cocodry, uh, uh, I-Beam, uh, uh, what was that one called? Nightbreak. All the venues, all of them are fucking gone. But the bottom of the hill is still there. And uh, so we started doing it there. Then eventually I moved to Los Angeles and it didn't happen for many, many years. Then I was turning 50 and I decided to fire it up. And I was like, what better way to do it than have Bill Burr on some drums? Cause he's, he loved ACDC and we'd become really, really good friends. And, uh, and I said, let's do Delray at the L Ray for my 50th. So that was seven years ago. And uh, we did that one and it was fun. And we've been doing it ever since again. And they've actually become another fucking level. You know, also, which is really wild is I do comedy now. If you did, if you guys didn't know, I do stand up comedy for 14 straight years now, as of last week, December 6th. I am on my 15th year right now. Stand up comedy. Get your fucking asses in the shows. I'll be in San Francisco this Sunday, the 17th at the chapel. And I'll be at Irvine Improv December 20th. Both headlining shows. San Fran, show up. Orange County, show up. My dog is going fucking crazy over here, trying to get under the blanket, doing a goddamn mummy move. Doing the mummy. You got to do the mummy. Anyway, so we fired it back up, and here we are. We're doing it January uh, 9th at the Avalon, which is, I believe, probably the best theater in L.A. to do a gig. It's not too big, and it's not too small. It has the ultimate fucking sound, incredible sight lines, amazing digital screens hold on i gotta hit this fucking sparkle in here my, my voice is trash mm, mm. there we go mm. yeah um and the avalon has so much history they were the palace back in the day you know i believe jane's addiction did their record release there g and r played there back in the 80s uh you know all the great great concerts would go down in the palace 
they had a uh, an amazing nightclub above it for years called the Spider Lounge, I think it was. Spider Room, Spider Club. Great. That's where I met, uh, what's that fucking street musician? Uh, musician, magician, David Blaine. I fucking met David Blaine one night in uh, the Spider Club. Me and my buddy Nico. And uh, he was standing there and he was talking to a girl in front of us. And we were all just chilling. And he goes, hey, what's that? And he fucking pulled like a string out of her cheek. And i tell you what, it looked real as fuck. I still don't know how he did it. Because the cheek was moving. Like, you know, when you're pulling something like a string and it's stuck. And he pulled this string out of her cheek. And I was like, what the fuck? I mean, I was truly fucking baffled watching this going like, you know, this isn't a card trick where he set up shit. Now, I don't know if he just had her, you know, somewhere and said, here, put the string in here and we'll do this and we'll blow people's minds. I don't know how it happened. But after that, I started watching all kinds of fucking David Blaine shit. And, uh, his shit was so insane it was more like uh houdini type of shit you know man frozen in time all of that shit anyway back to the club i can get sidetracked like a motherfucker um so it's it's coming up and let me give you the players it's going to be billy Rowe uh as the malcolm Scott Ian as a Malcolm, and then um, Steve Gorman, one of the greatest drummers ever from the Black Crows, formerly of the Black Crows. Uh, and, you know, if you have not read his book, the Black Crows book, it is, you can't put this thing down. And man, I tell you what, how he didn't get that audition for ACDC, I'll never know. But holy shit, he can play the, the Phil Rudd stuff perfect. Josh Z lead guitar, Lur from Primus on some lead guitar, Dave Lombardo on some drums, Josh Freeze on some drums. Uh, who else? Better get this right. Oh, Scott Holiday and Jay Buchanan of the Rival Sons joining up for some fucking songs. Oh my God, that, that is going to be cool as shit. Let me get the other players here. Uh, Mike Inez, Allison Chains, the nicest and the fucking best bass player in the game. Mike Inez on the uh, drums, up uh, the drums, on the bass. God damn it, Delray. And uh, who else we got here? We got some more. I can't announce yet. But. I do want to tell you this. We have a fucking killer poster. I don't think you're going to be able to see it. Let's see here. Nah. Oh, there it is. We're doing a limited edition poster. Kai Aarons, who I had on the podcast a couple months ago, incredible artist. He's done a lot of art for Devo and the Hollywood Bowl and shit, has put together a amazing poster. And I'll post that up. You can see it. So if you're coming to the show, bring a poster to uh, there's only a hundred of these posters and they are unreal. Uh, so Kai did the poster and then, um, we might have a limited edition shirt too. I don't want to, uh, talk about that yet, but if it happens, it's going to be fucking head exploder. Now tickets are available. The VIP, I think there's only 10 tickets left on the VIP. And I think there's only a couple hundred tickets left for the show. Do yourself a favor, get the tickets now. Do not miss this. I uh, each year don't know if I'll do it again. I said it was the last one a few years ago. And then I decided to do it one more time because the people that couldn't make it because of COVID, our last show was the last night LA was open, March 10th. And then the whole city and the whole, the whole planet shut down. So it was like the last rock concert in uh, Los Angeles. So I decided to do it again. Then my mom passed away, I had to cancel. 
And so here we are, a few years later. And, uh, you know, like I said, I don't know how, how if I can do it again. This is a farewell tour for the Bon Scott tribute farewell tour. <laughs> really, though, you know, you just never know. You don't know if you're going to be here a year from now. Nobody fucking knows that. Also, I never know each year if I can even sing it. I don't know until the couple of days before if I, I'll be able to sing. I, I don't sing for a living anymore. And uh, I can do it. But you never know. You go in there and you go, fuck, man. Like, I couldn't do it tonight. There's no fucking way I could do it tonight. My fucking voice is trash. Better get a, better get a recall. Recall. <laughs> That's not an ad for Ricola. I've been rocking Ricolas since they fucking, I don't know. They're probably some company that's been around 200 years, I was going to say, since they came out. But who knows? Ricola's, the uh, keep, keep the throat fucking lubed. <laughs> that sounds gross. Hey, keep your throat lubed. Um, anyway, now this fucking thing's going to make noise on the podcast. So, like I said, I never know. If I can even sing this thing, I'm not fucking all year doing Bon Scott tribute. A lot of times people go, man, you should be the singer for ACDC. And I, I talked about it before, the amount of training and uh, preparation it takes to sing ACDC is insane. I'll be getting ready for it now for the next four weeks. Lots of gym, lots of cardio. You have to have a lot of uh, breathing exercises. And, uh, you know, back in the day, you just little cocaine and booze. You went out there, kicked in the teeth again, you know. But that don't work when you're fucking 57. When you're young, you're bulletproof. You fucking party all night. You get up the next day. Ah, here are the dog. Quick shot of Jaeger. Boom. That's your mouthwash. Jaeger. Swish it around. Let's go. You're ready. Not when you're 57. Look at voices trash just from talking at a Christmas party. That's how fragile I am. <laughs> anyway, I want to address something. And uh, I don't think people really understand what this takes to uh, put together. I put it all together myself. There's no fucking Live Nation. There's no Ticketmaster. There's no promoters. It's all me. Which means I rent the room. All right. I rent the chairs. There's no chairs in the venue. I rent the chairs. I rent the equipment. I rent the rehearsal room. I uh, get the artwork together. I, uh, I, I get the players together. And then we, uh, we rehearse one day, the day before, and then we do the show. All the players have to fucking sit down for weeks and learn a long fucking set list, you know? And it's a lot of work, man. And so, look, I I, um, I appreciate your um, enthusiasm when you hit me and say, you should do it in New York. You should do it in San Francisco. You should do it in, uh, you know, wherever, Chicago. This is not just some janky players and uh, a thrown together thing. It's impossible to tour. It's superstar players, you know, that play in real huge bands for a living. Scott Ian, Anthrax. He's an Anthrax and Mr. Bungle, constantly touring. Dave Lombardo, Misfits, Bungle, uh, all kinds of groups, Phantomos, everything. Uh, Steve Gorman, he's got his band and he does a morning radio show. Mike Inez is in Alice in Chains. They tour all the time. And Billy Rose and Buck Cherry, they've been on the road for the last three years. 
Bill Burr is a goddamn superstar, arena comedian with a directing career now and a number one movie in the United States, Old Dad. So as much as, uh, you know, I would love to tour this like five dates or something, it's impossible. And I just wanted to put that out there to let people know there's no fucking way it's going anywhere else. Just to get this December 9th date, the one date where everyone was like, oh, I'm home, is almost impossible. You get about 10 dates and you send them out and quickly people are checking off. Can't do this date. Can't do that date. I got this going on. I got that going on. And then you zero it down. You have like 20 people on the list that are going to play. And it zeroes down to 10 people that can make it on this one day. And uh, it is, I just wanted to let you know how fucking much work and stress it is. And it's almost impossible to have people to help you because as soon as you do, there's people that lose interest real quick. Hey, I'll help out with that. And then you're like, hey, did you did you get that done? Oh, man. You know, oh, I forgot, man. So it's me and it's a, a, a lot of work and it's well fucking worth it. When we walk on the stage that one night, that's what makes it magic. One night. And you see those faces out there and they are fucking, they've flown in from London and, you know, Ohio, Chicago, Ireland, San Francisco. People fly in from everywhere and you see them and their fucking arms are in the air and they're, they're just having the time of their life. It's all worth it. It's all worth it. So as much as I uh, appreciate you suggesting I bring it somewhere else. It is absolutely impossible. Also, people are like, hey, put this on a pay-per-view. Stream this. It's not about that, man. This is about old school rock and roll where people go to a room and they get together and they fucking enjoy an evening in a venue with humans not on your couch, fucking sipping your Dr. Peppers. This is in a room like it was supposed to be and has always been meant to be. And loud, very loud. Fucking crank, cranked up, brother. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to get that out there. And uh, I hope you guys get tickets. TeenDelRay.com. The tickets are there, ready to go. There's only a couple hundred left. And, uh, and uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, Bon Bash has been talked about. Check that out. I want to, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, a legend we lost a couple days ago. And it was not tragic because the man lived to be 101. Now, it was sad for sure, but only sad for a minute because then you can dig in to the work that he has left behind and just have an incredible smile. I'm talking about Norman Lear, who was an old school uh, you know, producer, meaning, he only wanted to put out stuff that he felt was great, not what was going to make money. And if you have not read Norman Lear's book, I highly recommend it. It is fantastic. And uh, it made me dive down the All in the Family and, of course, Sanford and Son, but mostly All in the Family rabbit hole on uh, Pluto. I got Pluto. Pluto's great. I don't even fucking know how it operates, but it's got all the classic TV shows and you just watch them for free. There's commercials, but when they're on, I go like old school commercials. I get up, get something to drink, take a piss, uh, look at my phone, and then the commercials are over. 
I don't see one commercial. So uh, thank you, Pluto. Anyway, uh, Norman Lear created the incredible All in the Family. And so on Pluto, they've got them all on there. And I started watching them. And holy shit. This show, the first thing that hits me, uh, if I watch All in the Family, and then about, I think, 15 years later, I watch Spike Lee's film, Do the Right Thing, I realize something that is very sad about humans. And that is, we have not progressed at all. We've uh, digressed. Is that the right word? We have stayed in the same spot or even gone backwards. And uh, it is insane. Here you are. You're watching All in the Family. They're coming home. They're uh, covering. They're coming. They're coming. They're covering homophobia, religion, uh, racism, and, uh, you know, economy and politics, all of that in 1972, three, four. And it is exactly what is going on in 2024. And I've often said this many times, until we can watch All in the Family and Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing, until we can watch them and say, God, this show's dated, huh? We have not done anything to move forward. The only thing that's moved forward is the ability to get out your homophobia and your racism and your uh, political views on a social platform. The armchair warriors, the people in the basement have a place now to spew their insane negativity. And I don't care who the fuck you vote for. I'm talking about, are you a shitty person? And as you, as you have to do, sit down and ask yourself, am I a shitty person? Am I homophobic? Am I racist? Am I, uh, you know, somebody that uh, doesn't care about anything but myself? It's nuts. And it really actually, you know, I'm going to tell you this right now. As I watched All in the Family, I watched about 25 of them in a row. And multiple episodes, I found myself tearing up because I was just like, fuck, this is insane. It's exactly what's going on right now. But at a more fucking insane and evil uh, level. So, uh, wow, man. It is interesting. It is very interesting to see that shit. And, uh, and I see it daily in the comments on anything. Oh, this guy's a fucking blah, blah, blah. People will just say anything in the comments section of a social media platform, not giving a fuck about anything. People are like, you can't say anything anymore. Oh yeah, you can. Just look at the fucking social media uh, responses. As soon as somebody doesn't uh, agree with somebody else's thoughts, they're in there with their fucking vile bullshit. So, uh, it was interesting to watch All in the Family. Also, what an incredible show. The actors, Carol O'Connor, oh my God. And uh, Edith Bunker has got to be one of the greatest characters ever. Talk about a rock of a woman standing by the side of her garbage husband but slowly teaching him uh, what a moron he is over the years. Just constantly like, Archie, no. 
It's fucking great. Unbelievable. Meathead. Oh, Sally Struthers. She is amazing as the fucking daughter. You got Lionel. You got the neighbors, the Jeffersons. It's all good, man. This is some of the most intense, heartfelt TV of all time. I truly do not believe there's anything better that shows what kind of people we are in America than that show. It was just unreal to watch it and just go, God damn, this is fucking, this is brutal. Anyway, Norman Lear, thank you for all of your amazing uh, TV that you put out. There has not been anything that good since, which is crazy. You know, when people go, there's no good music anymore. I, I don't believe that at all. I've said that a million times. There's so much good music, but there is no good TV anymore. I will agree on that. I don't even watch TV. You know, Breaking Bad, Fantastic, Sopranos, The Wire. It's a handful of shows that you can really uh, stand behind in the last fucking 40, 50 years. Isn't that crazy? And I know you're going to DM me and go, well, man, you ought to check out blah, 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 blah. I get it. I get it. There's entertaining shows, but then there's fucking Led Zeppelin one level shows. You know, there's Prince sign of the time level shows. And, uh, you know, the wire being one of them. A lot of people didn't even watch the wire. It was so good. They didn't understand it. <laughs> Imagine that you make something so good that are people like, I don't get it. Twin peaks. Unbelievable, weird, fucking great TV. Anyway, there's Gertie over there snoring. I see you, Gertie. Anyway, Norman Lear, pour one out for that man. Read his book if you've not read it. It is unbelievable. Couple things here. I, uh, what do we got here? Trying, sorry, crunching on this goddamn recall. <laughs> Remember that commercial? The guy's getting ready to blow like a Swedish fucking horn. <clears throat> Gets a recall. And next thing you know, he's like, recall. Man, I am nuts today. I am nuts. I'm also pretty jacked up on the uh, the Bon Scott announcement. Pretty fired up. Oh, by the way, I'm going to be headlining Fort Collins, Colorado at the Comedy Fort, March 8 and 9, I think it is. So that's another cool uh, show coming up. And January 22nd through the 28th, I believe, I'll be at the Cellar in uh, Las Vegas uh, at the Rio Hotel. I'm going to go to Vegas to, to the Sphere, finally, and see uh, you two on my birthday, February 3rd. I'm going to be 58, take a handful of mushrooms, like I said before, and watch you two. I did get some rumblings uh, from a, a, a good source that Dead & Co., it's going to play the sphere. And uh, that's, uh, now look, I'm just saying, I don't know if it's true, but it came from a good source. Also, I heard Beyonce. So it looks like you're going to have Fish coming up, then maybe Dead Co., then maybe Beyonce. So, uh, holy shit, Dead Co. in there. Just imagine the deadheads in there, just on acid, just fucking steely face steelies flying all over in there crazy fucking visuals oh man people are going to be fucking people are going to be going crazy in there there's going to be a lot of fucking uh psychedelic meltdowns in the sphere 
over the next two, three years. They're going to have probably warnings on the ticket. Warning, acid heads. Be careful. The visuals are going to fucking freak you out in here. This isn't your average fucking, you know, six by nine video screens. This is a full fucking freak out. <laughs> you know, like when you watch uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, that movie, and you know, he's all, we walked into the casino and there was lizards coming out of the carpet. It was fucking madness. I was on 14 milligrams of mescaline, 18 grams of cocaine and five bottles of Smirnoff. Lizards and dragons were flying at me. Bats were coming everywhere. Ah, bats. They were fucking crazy. Bats. Bats were everywhere. Ah. The bats were biting me. It was biting a fucking burr. <laughs> what a great fucking film that is. Johnny Depp. God damn, he was so good at one time. Right? I don't know what happened to him. He got into that fucking pirate shit. Ah, I'm fucking, I'm Keith Richards on a movie. Ah. And then Leo, Leo just passed him up. See you, buddy. You get out there in your pirate ship. I'm going to do real movies still. You took the dollar, Johnny. You took the Hollywood dollar. <laughs> I'm not knocking him. I like Johnny Depp a lot. But uh, he did get fucking totally lost in, uh, you know, am I Keith Richards? Am I fucking uh, Hunter S. Thompson? Am I a pirate? What am I? Ah. Anyway, uh, I told you guys, right? I saw Killers of Flower Moon. It's good. I like Oppenheimer better. Uh, way better, actually. And Barbie, all these movies got, uh, got up some Golden Globe nominees today. Barbie was great. I recommend Barbie. Definitely on some psychedelics, man. It'd be so fucking weird watching Barbie on psychedelics. I got to go see the uh, Godzilla film. Uh, my buddy told me that uh, the Godzilla film was amazing. He called me up because, dude, you fucking got to see this Godzilla film. Best one since the first Godzilla. I love Godzilla. I love Ultraman. I, you know. Godzilla to me is way better than King Kong. King Kong's cool, but Godzilla is so fucking weird. So he's he's going on and on. You got to see Godzilla, dude. I'm like, all right. He's all, it is the best. And I was like, all right, I'm going to see it. And he kept saying how great it was. But then he's it's hard to take his word for it, you know, because he recommended this rib joint and said it was the best in Burbank. And it was just fucking god awful. So, so, you know, uh, I don't, I don't know if I should take his recommendation, but I'll go see it. I want to see Godzilla still. I want to see uh, Priscilla, and I want to see that fucking Frankenstein one with Willem Dafoe. Willem, <laughs> I was doing that joke. I've been doing that joke for about a year. Willem, I've been calling him William for years. Sometimes it gets laughs, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, by the way, I'll be in La Jolla this weekend, Thursday night for the Toys for Tots. Bring a toy down. We're going to give it to the Marines. They're going to hand out the toys to the kids. And uh, you'll get some free comedy down at La Jolla Comedy Store this Thursday. So come on out, bring a toy. Bring a G.I. Joe with fucking Kung Fu grip. Speaking of that. I went to the Rose Bowl flea market yesterday. I used to go to this for years and I dropped off about five years ago, maybe six years ago. I used to go like crazy. I used to come down from San Francisco to like twice a year to go. That's how much I love it. If you have not been to the Rose Bowl flea market, it is the greatest of all time. It is absolutely fucking massive. And at 57, all I kept thinking was they should rent those fucking bird scooters out there so we can, uh, our, us fatties, fatty America, fatty America can get zero exercise and just cruise the flea market in about 27 minutes on the bird scooters. 
just crashing into each other. But man, they need the bird scooters in there because my fucking feet were dust yesterday. And I'm in good shape. I fucking exercise every day. I go to the gym. But concrete and uh, the sun, it was 81 yesterday in December. There ain't no global warming, man. That's a bunch of fucking blue libertard bullshit, man. Fuck yeah. What about that tornado yesterday in Tennessee? Oh, man, dude, that was fucking just God going through cleaning up the people that want abortions. That's all that is. God's taking care of it. Getting rid of these sinners. These sinners, sinners swing. <laughs> anyway. I went to the Rose Bowl flea market. The first thing I thought was, I want everything here in my uh, full minimalist mode. It is so easy to quickly restock up on bullshit from uh, a nostalgic point of view. Like, oh my God, the Kiss dolls. I had those. I need them now. I need them back on the shelf so I can look at them twice and then never look at them again while they collect dust. Here's 400 for your kiss dolls. Oh, God damn it. The Bonanza, Bonanza lunchbox with Haas. I need a, another lunchbox next to my bionic man I don't look at and my fucking G.I. Joe's and uh, belt buckle collection I did during COVID. It is so easy to get fucking loaded up again on trinkets and bullshit. I got a new thing now. I go to the flea market and right when I think I want to buy it, I just take a picture and then I just look at the picture a few times a year and I'm good. <laughs> I'm fucking good. You know? Holy shit. The flea market is just everybody's collectibles that were in their garage or their living room out on a giant piece of black asphalt. And it's like, it's like fucking evil fishing. They put out the uh, bait and they've got garbage bait out there. And they, here you come as the fucking fish cruising down the black asphalt and bam. Ah, oh yeah, here it is. I got that fucking kiss poster. For 150 bucks, the one where they're on top of the Empire State Building. Fuck yeah. Here comes another fish. Mm. Oh yeah. I got a I got a vintage Coors Light shirt. That's two Coors Light shout outs on here. Ha <laughs> ha ha. Fuck Coors Light, man. Those people put the fuck Libertad boycott Coors Light. <laughs> anyway, it's crazy to think about how fast. I almost started filling up my house again, just walking around there like, oh God, here's the Duncan Imperial yo-yo, the butterfly. Oh man, here's the bendable buddies from Berg or Jack in the Box. Here's a Stretch Armstrong. I need a Stretch Armstrong. You know, you got that shit up. You meet some woman of your dreams. You think this is the one I'm going to marry. She comes over and sees your Stretch Armstrong and your Kiss dolls. She's like, dude, you're 57 and just walks out. Vagina dry up. Nothing quicker on a vagina dry up than a set of Kiss dolls on your fucking mantle in your bedroom. <laughs> Are you tired of vagina dry up? Do you hear that sound when your lady friend comes in the house? Get garbage man. Garbage man will come over and get rid of the vagina dry up. He will quickly throw away all your dumb shit on your mantles that are quickly drying up vaginas. Garbageman.com. <laughs> Man, I'm fucking nuts today. I'm killing it with the funny shit. Anyway, had a great time at the flea market. Went with uh, Shaylin, my good friend Shaylin. We had a killer fucking time. We're, we're, we're about adult shit now out there. 
you know, plants. Oh God, here's a good deal on a plant. Eight bucks. Fuck yeah. Uh, Mid-century furniture, art. Wow, here's a good painting some granny did in the 60s. You know, they got something for everybody out there. And over the years, my taste has changed. Like I first was going, I'd go in the 80s. Uh, yeah, late 80s. I drive down and you could buy an early bird ticket and go in at 5 a.m. And there'd be these Japanese guys out there with flashlights in the fucking dark because it was still dark. And they're just digging through people's Levi's, looking for big E Levi's. That shit was selling for big money. And Japanese would be in there like, oh, here, big E, big E, you know, and buka leather jackets. And then years later, it became vintage cowboy boots. Oh, look at these. Fuck yeah. Vintage cowboy boots. And then it became all about, you know, uh, kiss belt buckles or those rock belt buckles and and rock memorabilia rock t-shirts oh fuck here's judas priest cow palace screaming for vengeance to her all those years you always have something myself it keeps me going something i'm into finding and collecting and uh, gets you out of the house that fucking drive eBay kind of ruined it a little bit. It's not as good. It's a lot like those people that want me to stream the Bon Scott bash. eBay is like that. It's like, dude, go to your flea market. Mingle with people like the old days. I was talking to a friend over the weekend. He's doing a digital detox. He's off the fucking smartphone. And he's got what he calls a dumb phone. It's just the old fucking phone. It's just a phone. And, uh, you know. Get out to the flea market, mingle with people. How else are you going to brush up on your fucking hate? And, you know, if you're not out in the, in the real people, look at that fucking guy with his dumb Crocs wearing Crocs. I did see a guy yesterday. Oh, my God. I've said it for years. I love the dead now. And the reason I hated him early on was mostly because of their fans. And there were these two deadheads there yesterday. And we're talking 81 degrees, crusty black asphalt. And they're walking around with no fucking shoes on. At a flea market where people are, you know, dogs are pissing and shitting and people are spitting and cigarette butts, just cruising around with no shoes at the Rose Bowl in this, uh, time of fentanyl and possible syringes anything just no shoes fucking what are you doing buddy anyway had a great time i think it's once a month i don't know it's second sunday or something but go to the rose bowl and check it out 12 bucks to get in so fucking worth it they got food there too you can walk around and have a goddamn chiro Get some kind of fucking uh, rice bowl. Anyway, before I get out of here, I want to uh, tell everybody that I have been on a heavy Christy McVie Fleetwood Mac binge. And uh, Stevie, cool. Stevie Nicks, cool. But Christy McVie to me is truly a genius. Rest in peace. We lost her a while ago, but... I have been so into Christy McVie era Fleetwood Mac. She is unbelievable. And I truly believe crazy underrated. Just amazing voice. Great, great, great voice. And great player. Christy McVie era Fleetwood Mac. I can't get enough of it. That and, uh, you know, that's been my Sunday of course, always for my mom, the great Carol King Tapestry, and still rocking John Mayer, born and raised on Sundays, but also reliving the newest uh, John Mayer record, Sob Rock. Back on that again, man. Sunday music. There's nothing better. Get up early, get a good breakfast on, a coffee, hit the flea market, come home, rest your dogs. And listen to some uh, Fleetwood Mac, some Carol King, some Miles Davis, some John Mayer Sob Rock, 
It is it, it, Sunday is just beautiful. Sunday is a beautiful day. Ian Edwards was telling me, he goes, man, you cannot beat a Sunday in LA. And, and he is right. The amount of shit you could do on a Sunday in LA, flea markets, the beach, uh, arrowhead, the mountains, hiking, uh, you know, farmers markets. It is just beautiful Sundays, man. And I don't go to church and I'm not into that shit, but my religion is truly just some good music, good food, some friends and laughs on a Sunday during the day. I've missed so many of them back in the day, being all high all night, just sleeping all day, oh, getting ready to go swing a hammer on Monday. Like, fuck, I got to get it together. A Domino's call. Domino's? Yeah, a large pepperoni. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I went into Stephen Wright there. Yeah. Domino's. A lot of people like it. I love you guys. Get your tickets. Uh, December 17th, uh, Chapel, San Francisco. December 20th, Irvine Improv, uh, Orange County, California. January 9th, Let There Be Rock, the Bon Scott Bash. All available, deandelray.com, patreon.com slash deandelray. I love you guys. Keep the candles lit. And I will see you, oh, La Jolla, Thursday night, Toys for Tots, G.I. Joe with Kung Fu Grip. Candles lit. See ya.